welcome back to our youtube channel so this is the second video of this slate 2019 question paper solve series so the fifth question was four perfect polarizing plates are stacked so that the axis of each is turned 30 degree clockwise so four plates that is polarizing plates are given and they are inclined at an angle 30 degree okay so this is uh, this is 30 degree with respect to this this 30 degree with respect to this this 30 degree with respect to this so that 30 30 30 ultimately 90 so it is inclined at an 90 degree with respect to this so these two are perpendicular okay next how much of the intensity of an incident unpolarized beam of light is transmitted by the stack so initially the light was unpolarized uh, with a intensity i naught now we have to find out the value of id after passing this after passing through these uh, four plates okay so we know according to mela's formula i theta equal to half i naught cos square theta for unpolarized light and for polarized light the formula is i theta equal to i naught cos square theta so i naught is given initial light intensity is i naught then i1 that is after passing through the first polarizer then i1 will be i naught by 2 this is that is half i naught and cos 0 cos 0 is 1 so ultimately i naught by 2 next now this i1 is the incident intensity for the second polarizer so for the second polarizer now the light is polarized so we have uh, used the formula for polarized light therefore i2 equal to i naught by 2 cos square 30 degree so i naught by 2 3 by 4 and ultimately 3 i naught by 8 so i2 is 3 i naught by 8 next after passing through the third polarizer i3 so i3 is 3 i naught by 8 this is the incident intensity for the third polarizer and cos square 30 degree so ultimately uh, the answer is 9 i naught by 32 then after passing through the fourth polarizer this is your it so it will be 9 i naught by 32 this is 9 i naught by 32 and cos square 30 so this will give 27 i naught divided by 128 so 27 i naught divided by 128 so option b is correct so this is the sixth question the Fourier series corresponding to the function that is fx equal to 1 between 0 and l and this is 0 between minus l to 0. So we know the formula for uh, Fourier series fx equal to a0 summation n goes from 1 to infinity a n cos n pi x by l plus b n sine of n pi x by l and a0 a n b n these are a given here. So let's find this below. So a naught equal to 1 by twice l minus l to l fx dx. Now let's break this integration. So if you break then it will be a minus l to 0 and then 0 to l. So minus l to 0 the value is 0. So that term will be 0. And from 0 to l the value of fx is 1. So 1 into ds and ultimately you will get this is half. And you see from the option a is 2 by pi it is not correct so this is also 2 by pi not correct and this is half it may be correct and this is also half it, it may be correct so c and d may be correct c or d may be correct okay now bn equal to 1 by l this minus l to l fx sine of n by x by l dx so similarly doing 0 to l 1 1 into sine of n pi x by l because uh, minus l to 0 term would be vanish so if you do the integration sine become cos and now you will finally get minus 1 by n pi cos of n pi minus cos of theta now you can't uh, simplify this term because uh, here n is involved and you don't know whether n is even or odd okay so for if n is even then this term become 0 so let's uh, n is 2 so this is twice pi so twice pi cos twice pi is 1 and minus cos 0 is also 1 so 1 minus 1 equal to 0 so ultimately this becomes 0 but if n is even suppose n is 1 so cos pi you know cos pi equal to minus 1 
and uh, this is minus 1 so minus 1 minus 1 is minus 2 and this minus and that minus will be become plus so ultimately 2 by n pi so only the odd terms will be there so odd terms is sine of 1 pi x by l 3 pi x by l 5 pi x by l so odd term will be there and 1 by n is there so 1 by n means 1 by 1 equal to 1 1 by 3 then 1 by 5 then 1 by 7 like this and uh, since uh, 1 is an even function so you will not get a n term because a n term ultimately leads to an 0 result okay so option uh, c is correct next the 7 so these are the data that were uh, given to us and we have to find out the standard deviation so i have made a column for x so these are the x eight values are given and we know the formula for standard deviation equal to root over summation of x minus x bar whole square divided by n where x bar is the average of this data and if you do the average that means if you add all these terms and divided by eight then you will arrive at 10.4 and then you just do x minus x bar so 10 minus 1 minus 10 minus 4 will be minus 0 0.3 then uh, 10 minus 6 minus 10 minus 4 will be 0 0.2 like this and next we have to do x minus x bar whole square so you just uh, square this term so 0 uh, 0.3 into 0 0.3 will be 0 0.09 like this then use the formula that is standard deviation is equal to root over summation of x minus x bar whole square divided by n so if you add all these terms then ultimately you will get 0 0.24 and divided by 8 since there are n terms or n sets are given so you just do the calculation then ultimately you will get 0 0.173 gram so option a is correct so this is the ninth question so one mole of an ideal gas is taken through the following cycle. So a PV diagram is shown and this is the cycle. So uh, for our convenience, let's this, this corner is A, this is B and this is C. So from A to B, you see volume is increasing. Initially it is uh, V0 and now it is twice V0. So expansion will be there. So this is your isothermal expansion and we know the formula of work for isothermal expansion is W equal to nRT ln V2 by V1. We also know from the ideal gas equation that is PV equal to nRT. So you just replace nRT by PV and then just uh, put the values. So P, initial P is twice P0, though this is twice P0 and V is V0. Okay, V is V0. Now ln V2. So V2 will be this. So the volume corresponding to this is twice V0 sorry so value corresponding to this is twice v0 and uh, v1 v1 is v0 so twice v0 by v0 so ultimately twice p0 v0 ln p now this is your b this is your c right so b to c you see b to c pressure is remains constant so uh, it is a isobaric process so for isobaric process w equal to p dv or p v2 minus v1 so p is here P0 and V2 is V0 minus V1 is minus 2 V0 so minus 2 V0 ultimately you will get minus P0 V0 then this is your C this is your A so from C to A you see volume remain constant so it is an isoporic process so W equal to P dV since volume is constant so dV will be 0 so ultimately work will be 0 so total work done wd you just add these three terms and ultimately if you common p0 v0 then you will get this term so option d is correct okay option c is not correct option d is correct so in question number 10 generating function is given that is f equal to small q capital q cot t and we have to find out the canonical transformation so given f equal to small q capital q cot t Therefore, f is a function of small q, capital Q and t. So, you can find uh, from this uh, small p 
that is small p equal to minus del f1 divided by del q so which will be q cot t and uh, you just take this cot t here so you will get q equal to p by cot t so p tan t and uh, from capital q is given so capital p equal to minus del f1 by del q so p equal to minus q cot t so option yeah c is correct not option b is not correct okay option c is correct okay so thank you for watching these videos so if you need more videos then please subscribe our channel thank you